In this tutorial, we're going to look at solving linear simultaneous equations. What do I mean by linear? Well, have a look at the equations in the question. There are no squares there at all. If there were, they would be quadratic simultaneous equations, and you would need to look at another tutorial. These two highlighted equations are both the equations of straight lines, and what we're really doing is finding out the point at which those lines cross. Right, how do we do this? Well, always a good idea in simultaneous equations to label your equations, A and B, I'm going to call them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use something called the elimination method or the balance method, which is where we make the coefficients of either x or y the same size in my equations. Okay, because at the moment they're different, but if you look at these equations I could very easily multiply the second one by 4, and then I'd have 4y in each of them. Why would I do that? Well, I could then add, or in this case, subtract the new equations, and that would get rid of the y's, and leave me with an equation in x, which I can then solve. And having found x, I can substitute that back into either of my original equations to find the other variable, in this case, y. And then the beauty of simultaneous equations is you can always tell if you're right, because you just use the equation you haven't just used, the other equation, and check. So let's do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to label these equations. So call that one A, call that one B. And then, as I said earlier, we're going to multiply this second equation by 4 so that the coefficients of y match. So write down what you're doing, B times 4, that reminds you what you're doing, it tells anybody looking at this what you're doing. And 4 times 4x is 16x, 4 times y is 4y, and 4 times 11 is 44. Don't forget to multiply that side as well. And I can now, if I give that a name so I can refer to it, call that c, I can now eliminate the y's by subtracting, because 4y minus 4y is 0. Okay, so I'm going to subtract equation a from equation a. C. So I'm going to do C minus A. Why have I done it that way around? Because I have more X's in C than in A, and I like to keep things positive. So here we go. 16X minus 3X is 13X. 4Y minus 4Y is 0. That's rather the point. And 44 minus 5 is 39. And now step 3, solve the resulting equation. Divide both sides by 13, it's never a very difficult equation to solve. The 13's on the left cancel, and I get 39 over 3, and 39 over 3 is 3, which gives me one of my two answers. I need an answer for x and an answer for y. I can now substitute that back into either of these equations. I'm actually going to substitute it back into b, because that would seem to be the easier equation, and that gives me... 4 times 3, which is 12, is it not, plus y equals 11. And to solve that equation, I simply subtract the 12 from both sides. Uh, sometimes it'll be a little more hard work, but not this time. And that gives me y equals minus 1. So there are my two answers, x equals 3 and y equals minus 1. Now I did say we could check in the other equation. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it in green. I'm going to say check in. Well, which is the other equation? I've just used B, so I need to check in A. And 3 times uh, x, so 3 times 3, plus 4 times minus 1. Well, 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times minus 1 is minus 4. And 9 minus 4 is 5. So it works. And I know, therefore, that I've got the right answer. They do get a little bit more complicated. Um, sometimes you'll have to do something to both equations in order to balance the um, coefficients of one of the things. So I'm going to call them A and B again, as we have done in the previous question. And I'm going to decide which way I'm going to do this. I could balance the x's by multiplying the first one by 4 and the second one by 3. Or I could balance the y's by multiplying the first one by 5 and the second one by 2. It doesn't really matter which I do. I'm going to do it the second way. So I'm going to get 5 times equation a, 
and I'm also going to do 2 times equation B. So here we go. 5 times equation A, I get 15x minus 10y equals 55. And if I do 2 times equation B, I get 8x plus 10y equals 14. And I'm going to give these new equations new names. So C and D, very imaginatively. And now, although they've got different signs, the coefficients of y, the numbers in front of the y, are the same size. And because they've got different signs, I'm now going to add the equations together. So I do C plus D. And 15 plus 8 is 23, so I get 23x. I get no y's, that was the whole point of doing this. And I get 69 on the right. And again, a fairly simple equation to solve, so I divide both sides by 23. And yes, they cancel on the left, the 23's, that was the point. And I get x equals, well, 69 over 23 is 3 again. And then I need to substitute something into one of my original equations. And I'm substituting the x into, well, I'm going to put it into equation B. Because although the numbers are bigger, there are no minus signs. And minus signs can cause problems. So I get 4 times 3, which is 12, plus 5y equals 7. And to, sub to solve this equation, I subtract the 12 from both sides, which gives me 5y equals minus 5, and then simply dividing by the 5 allows me to get y equals. The 5's on the left cancel, and on the right I get y equals minus 1. And we can check this, of course. Okay, we've just used equation b, so let's check in a. And what do we get? Well, we get uh, 3 times 3, minus 2 times minus 1. Okay, so 3 3's are 9, minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2, 9 times 9 plus 2 is 11. And again, it works. So that is the balance, or the elimination method. There are other ways of doing it, and we'll explore one of those in the quadratic simultaneous equations tutorial.